Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really lovely cascade card. It folds completely flat, fitting inside your envelope, and you've got room on the back there to write your message. And then as it comes out of the envelope, it will just open like so. So the person will know what to do with it. They will see that it does this, and it will just stand up like so. That's the profile that they will see. So you get that cascade effect, all the different levels, showing off all the lovely printed papers and all the little embellishments that you stick on it. You can see that I've got this really nice bunting and then I've got the happy birthday to you at the back and it all stands up really nicely. Folds flat and like I said you do have lots of room on the back there and you can stamp anything you want there as well. So let me show you how to make it. Okay so the inspiration for today's card actually came from Make Special Cards magazine. This is the February 2019 issue 16 um, and it is a bumper pack. It's really, really good value for money. I paid 11 99 which some of you may be like, oh my gosh, for a magazine. But wait until you see what you got in it because I was a little bit like, oh gosh, yeah, £12, that's quite a lot. But I think it's really good value. So I got, like I said, the inspiration here. So they actually done theirs for Mother's Day, but here are all the Cascade cards. Their measurements were slightly different and they were in centimetres. So I just played around and I've come up with my one. And... Um, yeah, it's full of inspiration. I'm not going to go through it all there because obviously if you want it, you can go and grab it. But you get this stamp set. That's my stuff for today's card. There is the stamp set. Oh, there we go. It's a bit better. Really lovely. So this is a just bigger than 5 by 7 stamp set. And these are the images. And I went ahead and I fussy cut them and I coloured them in with my watercolour pencils. But just how adorable are these? Look at those so many you get the lovely daffodils it's a real nice easter spring like i said mother's day kind of thing but they are the stamps that you get plus all the wonderful sentiments and they're really nice when you've got a hoppy easter on your special day happy mother's day have a blooming marvelous birthday for a special man which i liked that one and for you mum um thank you will you be mine happy birthday to ooh and hip hip hooray and then somebody loves you so again, really nice. So you get those and then just keep all that to one side. All these amazing papers and there are tons and they're really good quality. So you can see here how many you get. And it's not that shiny paper. It's really nice, good quality paper. Um, and I'm thoroughly enjoying going through this. Plus you get all of these, which I've die cut. I'm sorry, that were pre die cuts, so you just pop them out, and there are tons, tons, and tons, and tons. And that's what I've used to create this cascade card, and that's what I'll be using on the other one as well. So, for the amount of cards that I will get out of this, um, I think $11.99 is really good. Plus, there are also, I believe, downloads as well. Yeah, 100 die cut toppers, 60 pattern papers. Um, 27 stamp designs, 6 square card blanks, yeah, 6 white envelopes and 52 page magazine full of inspiration so I'm sure somewhere there's some downloads as well, I'm pretty sure um, but yeah, you've got just tons, so anyway enough about the magazine, pop all that away let's crack on with the card so you're going to need I've already gone and cut it and then realised, oops, I need to film this so <laughs> It's already cut into shape, but I'll talk you through that. So you're going to need two pieces that are 10 by 7. Okay, so this is going to be a 5 by 7 card base. So 10 by 7, you want two pieces. And on both of the pieces, along the 10 inch side, you want to score at 2.5 and 7.5, and, and, and then flip it and score at 5 okay because you're going to fold this one different to the other ones so you're going to have two piece two pieces that are like i said 10 by 7 okay and then just score at two and a half and seven and a half flip it and score at five once you've got those two pieces you've got your seven inch side here you want to cut from that seven inch side you're going to cut all the way across here now this measurement what you want to do on this side here so you imagine yours is going to be a full piece here still, okay? You want to just come up at two and a half and put a pencil mark and then cut from the top corner here down to that two and a half marker. And then this bit here, 
you can either use for your mats and layers or you can just keep it in your scraps so you'll have this piece cut out okay so that was the bit I already went ahead and done and then thought oh gosh I should be filming this so yeah so you'll now have two pieces obviously if it's plain paper you just flip one over so they are like that okay you'll have them cut like this okay if you are using patterned paper then you will want to do this is the left hand side which is seven inches cut down to two and a half inches up on the other one you'll want to do it on the left hand side so if it's pattern paper you're using one you will cut you will cut up from the right hand side and one you will cut up from the left hand side because you want to make sure your prints are right because obviously with the plane we can just flip this it doesn't matter which way you know upside down it doesn't matter but if you're using pattern paper then you need to do yeah one from the right hand side and one from the left hand side okay then what you want to do is fold one like so and like that okay and then you'll see you'll have these lines here which are really just cut lines we're not actually going to be doing anything with them these are the fold lines okay and one goes that way and one goes that way what's going to happen is is this is going to go over the top like so and that now gives us our five by seven card base so what we need to be doing next we're going to cut down here on this one and on this one we're going to cut up from the bottom halfway up and then that will slide over the top and again we're going to do the same with this one here on these score lines down here so first of all if I get rid of I don't need the scoreboard anymore so first of all starting with this one here now you can either use your scissors or a cutting knife I've got my long scissors lots of people ask me about these these are from a company called Hay it I believe they are a Scandinavian company um, possibly Copenhagen because I think that's where I came across them anyway this is they're made in Italy they they're not cheap they are um, I'm more of a, an investment piece but they are wonderful for cutting you can see there they're so long so that's why I really like these ones but anyway I've tried to share links but because they're more of a I think people it's like a wholesale I'm not entirely sure but that's who they're by anyway so I'm going to use my just use my little metal ruler here actually and grab a pencil so you just want to come down if I do it that way here so this is on the one where you've got your seven inch side on the left hand side so I'm coming in from the top and I'm going to come down that whole line is just under six inches so it's five and seven eighths let's say it's six and you want to mark it three okay just under if you do the sixteenth just just put a little marker just under three inches and that will be halfway so I'm now going to cut down from the top I'm going to cut down to that pencil mark like so okay and then on this side keep them so they're facing like this okay so we've just cut down here on the same line on this one we're going to cut up and we're going to do the same measurement again so like I said halfway yeah it's five and seven eighths so you want to just do um, so it would just be just over three from the bottom okay it's roughly halfway and then you're going to cut up like so and now and then just go like so okay and you'll start to see you get the back of that cascade so now we've got these pieces like so then we need to now cut the same so I've cut the top here I want to cut the top on this one here so this is three and five eighths so so I'm going to put a marker just in between the one and three quarters and one and seven eighths it's that kind of sixteenths but you just want to roughly mark halfway okay and again on this one here okay and then cut the same way so if you've cut from the top down cut from the top down on that same piece so again I've gone over just a little bit just so I know that it will definitely go over okay so again I'm going to pop that one in 
like so, bring it right down, and then these ones here, you want to slide in, it's a bit like a jigsaw, like so. Once all your mats and layers are on, it will stay in place, and now you will have your cascade. Okay, and like I said, the whole thing folds flat. So it is it's, it is very straightforward to do. It's just making sure, I guess, you just cut the right way and you don't cut too far down. And now it's all ready to decorate. So, okay, what I would say is why you've got it like this, because we're going to be adding mats and layers. If you just put a cross on all of the sections that you can see, like so, then you know that they're the ones that you want to decorate. So they're all the ones that we're going to be adding our mats and layers on. So now if I just take this all back out again, it's just easy to decorate because when you open it up, you know you just want to stick your mats and layers on those ones, then flip it over and on those ones there. It just makes it much easier um, to decorate it while it's in two separate pieces like this and, you know, flat. So next you just want to decide on the colours and how you want to do all your mats and layers. So I'll just bring this one in here so you can see. So I've got a really bright yellow as my base and then I've done blue patterned. On the next one I've done red and patterned and then blue and patterned and then red and patterned. So I've got kind of a, a, a sequence I guess but you could do them all odd, you could do them all exactly the same, it's entirely up to you. But I'm going to keep that one in frame there just so you can kind of see what I've done. And then I changed it last minute just before I was starting to film um, because originally I was going to have this yellow at the back but I don't know there's something about that kind of yellow it's more of a mustardy yellow and I'm not feeling it as much this one's a real bright yellow so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this and I think I'm going to bring in white and then I'm going to have this pattern paper against the white and I think it lifts and pops a lot better and then by the time I've got all these wonderful bits to decorate, I've got the bunting here and everything, it should hopefully all come together really nicely. So the easiest way to cut these mats and layers is every single mat, so your first one, so the blue and the red in this case, these are all two and a quarter wide. So lay it down bringing it up slightly so you can see there where I've given myself this nice border here, here and here and then bring it all the way up and I'm going to put a pencil mark giving me that same border just there so I have just done a pencil mark at six and three quarters okay so six and three quarters there it's two and a quarter wide and you want to do a little marker at, like I said, six and three quarters, and then if you come up this side, I'm going to do my marker at five and five eighths of an inch. Okay, this is for your two biggest ones, so you want to do this twice. If it's plain paper, then it doesn't matter which direction you do this. If I now pop this in my trimmer and just line up the pencil marks. So that's the five and five eighths, that's the six and three quarters. And then I can cut across and I get a perfect mat. See there? That fits in there perfectly and I've got that nice even border. Now I need to do that twice. So again, because I'm using white, plain white paper or cardstock, I'm just going to sit that one over the top, pop it in my trimmer and just line them up. Like so. Now because they're plain, all I have to do now is flip one round that way and you'll see I'm now going to have one to go over that crossed section and then on this one here, this one will go perfectly on that one there and you can see I get that really nice border on both of them. Okay, now if you're using patterned paper here, what you would need to do is have your patterns, do one, whatever side it doesn't matter, do one like I've showed you, then get your pattern paper and put the pattern to pattern like so, and then cut it through your guillotine, okay? Don't have the pattern on the top here and then this pattern piece on top that way. Put your patterns to pattern and then cut them. In fact, I'll probably have one here to show you in a moment. So, so you'll need two mats of that size that I've just given you, and they are gonna go on the back. Next, I am gonna do the pattern paper to go over the top. So this one I'd already done, I think. Let's just move that out of the way. Yeah, so I think that one now just stands out so much better against the white than it did against the yellow. So I've already done that one. 
and I've already done that one there. So the measurements for these are, so all your layers will be two inches wide, okay? So choose all your pattern paper, that will all be two inches wide. Like I said, your mats will be two and a quarter. For this particular one, you are gonna need to cut it by two by six and a quarter, okay? Two by six and a quarter. And then from that six and a quarter, you wanna measure on one side, five and three eighths of an inch, okay? So from five and three eighths of an inch up to that six and a quarter, cut it on your guillotine. And like I said, you wanna put your pattern papers together like that, okay? So then when you cut them through your guillotine, when you open them up, you'll have them both, one going from the right up to the left and one from the left up to the right, like so. Because everything's a mirror image, okay? So hopefully I'm explaining this. This is probably the, just the most, it's not even complicated, it's just making sure you cut them all in the right direction. So next for this here, I'm going to use, so I'm going to get rid of this yellow. Okay, so again, these ones I've already cut, and these are that same width, so two and a quarter, because all our mats are two and a quarter, and you can see how that fits in there perfectly. So you just want to come down, so two and a quarter by five and a half, and you want two pieces. And then from the five and a half on the other side, you want to put a pencil mark at four and a half, and then just cut from the five and a half down to the four and a half. Do that on both pieces, and they will fit in like so. Okay, so you can see now how they're coming together. And then I want to have my pattern paper on top of that, which again, I'd already gone ahead and prepared. So these pieces here are two, okay, so two inches wide and one of them is two inches by five and a quarter, okay? And then on the other side, you wanna mark at four and a quarter and then cut. So again, remember, you put them together like so. Your two, sh your two pieces that you will have that are two by five and a quarter, yep, sandwiched together like that. And then on this side here, you will do four and a quarter and then just cut across so that when you open them up, that's what you'll get. So again, that one's going to go on top of there, and that one's going to go on top of there. So you can see now how it's all going to come together. So now these are going to fold over, so I've got to do these ones here. Okay, so for these ones here, you want two pieces that are two and a quarter by four and three eighths. Okay, and then again, exactly the same. So on one side, so they're four and three eighths, I'm going to then come across, and this is three and three eighths here. So I've got a pencil mark there at three and three eighths. Take both your pieces, the one that I've already done my measurement on. So I'm just lining up the top there. That's the four and three eighths, and then line the three and three eighths up. Hopefully this makes sense. And then I'm just gonna put it over that one because it's plain, so it doesn't matter. just the pattern you just got to make sure when you cut your pattern that your pattern is pattern to pattern <laughs> and then that one's going to go in there that one's going to go there okay and then my pattern papers to layer on those is four by two and you want to come down on one of the sides at three and a quarter so just put a pencil mark at three and a quarter. Again, this one here, line up your point and then line up the three and a quarter, like so. And then I'll pop that one pattern to pattern, okay? And then that will go perfectly on top. And by doing it that way, you know that they're each, every one is the same. You know, that is exactly the same size because sometimes your pencil lines might be slightly out, even if it's just by a millimetre or so, but it will make the overall look slightly different, but at least that way you can see that they do look the same. And then I need to do, so I'm gonna have red again. Okay, so these two pieces are two and a quarter by three and a quarter. And again, on one of the sides, you wanna come down to two and a quarter. Yeah, just there, I'll put a pencil mark at two and a quarter. Again, exactly the same process. And that one's gonna go there, and that one's gonna go there. And then my pattern papers go on top, 
Okay, pattern paper is two and seven eighths of an inch by two inches. One, two, yep. Yeah. And again, just check my measurement there. Yep. Yeah. So I've come up on this one to two inches. Okay, and just put a pencil mark there. And again, just pop that one through. You can put both your pattern papers through at the same time. I just like to keep them um, separate. Yeah, that was my other piece. I'm just going to, again, always put them pattern to pattern. So that is now what you should have. All your mats and layers all in place. Let's pop that to one side. And you can see there. Okay, so now I'm going to go and get those all stuck down. Okay, so now you can see all my mats and layers and they look really nice together. I'm really pleased with those. So next you can then go back and pop it all together. So that one in there and cross that one over and slide that one in there. And look how nice that looks. It just instantly comes together. Absolutely gorgeous. And it will stand up. And they are, they're so easy. They make a real impact, these ones, I love them. So now it's just down to decorating. So I have this piece here and I was kind of thinking about doing that same like bunting that I've got there because I really like that, how it kind of comes out. And then I have, and I'll stick that down the same way, but that's gonna go there. Then I'm gonna stick that one and the presents. It's pretty much the same, thinking about it. And then that one's gonna go there. And then this here is gonna stick, make sure this is all, lined up because this holds everything in place. That one's going to go across there. I'm going to have to trim a little bit off of this end here just so I can get the whole of that one. I didn't want to lose any of the little party hats and now that sits perfectly and that one's going to go across there. So I'm going to get that all stuck down. And there you have it. And look how cute that looks. Really love it. I also went and done the back panels as well, which are the same size as these white ones here. So you just need to do four of that size. And I've got that lovely bunting there. And then when it stands up, you can see you get that nice cascade effect. I mean, that I guess does kind of stop it coming out further because you want it to be maybe more like that. But I'm still quite happy with it like that. That's the profile, that's what people see. And I think that looks really nice. So you could put the bunting in another way if you wanted to. Now this one is bigger because this was my kind of prototype and I was playing around with it. But again, they both stand up really nicely. I'm really pleased with them. And they're going to make really fun, lovely birthday cards. So there you go, guys. That's my Cascade card. I hope you like it. You'll find all of the measurements and the supplies that I've used over on my blog. And all of that can always be found in the description box below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.